Uh, we uh, went about the process of uh, uh, assessing uh, the problem by uh, creating independent uh, uh, panels. Um, we had expert panels who assisted us. Uh, we had studies that were done uh, independently. Uh, we had site visits to uh, prison facilities and other uh, types of detention facilities. And we had public hearings. And we think we reached out to every segment of society that has some role to play uh, in this particular situation. And we believe that our standards are, are what needs to be adopted in order for uh, us to have uh, a real meaningful impact on, on this problem. Why are we here today? Uh, it's because we have concerns that the uh, rule that has been proposed by the Justice Department will uh, weaken uh, what we have uh, indicated we believe needs to be done. Uh, we do commend uh, the Department for some of the recommendations uh, that they made, uh, but there are some core problems that we think, if they are not uh, adequately addressed uh, by the Department, uh, we feel that it will undermine our good efforts that we engaged in to try and address this problem. Instead, the Department of Justice decided to start a process that has elongated, that start, started from zero, basically set aside our report and started from zero on the standards. And that's what's added all this time. And according to the Department of Justice, it'll be almost another year before they're implemented. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, put a number on how many people are sexually abused, but we know the number is astronomical. Uh, one of the last reports uh, that was done by the Justice Department itself would indicate that uh, about 70,000 people every year are forcibly raped in prisons and jails. And that is an intolerable uh, number. So obviously, uh, self-policing has not uh, resolved this problem. There has to be outside oversight. Independent, competent, and publicly reported audits are the foundation of this House. And I think we have to continue uh, to educate the public about uh, the reality of prison rape and its consequences, because most of the people who are incarcerated, contrary to what some people believe, those people are coming back. And if they have been abused while they were incarcerated, th uh, they will pose a greater risk to society once they come back. And I think if society appreciates that that is something that's that, that, that is a reality, I think public pressure uh, will have an impact. Not taken into account in the Department of Justice figures are the cost of settling cases of rapes. In Michigan, they settled a, a group of women's complaints for 100 million dollars. That doesn't include all the lawyers' fees, all those years, all the administrative staff that went into defending a system that had systematically raped these women. That would have paid for a lot of the reforms recommended in our standards. If it's just business as usual, then, um, then the public uh, will be uh, poorly served because it'll still put inmates at risk. What we're doing now results in the 70,000 rapes a year of our inmates, which is scandalous. And if the BOP won't be doing anything different, then we've missed this opportunity to give more protection to inmates. Although uh, we are no longer uh, a commission in operation, all of us are committed uh, to seeing what we've proposed uh, uh, adopted. Uh, so we're not gonna go away, and our, vo our voice will continue to be heard uh, with the hope that in the end uh, there will be uh, meaningful uh, 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 approaches uh, adopted both at the federal, state, and local le level that will make our uh, institutions more uh, humane.